Hello and welcome everybody, it's your boy King Demps with a quick preview of the IAM Katowice playoffs. Now we are down to the final six teams here at IAM Katowice and actually it's a pretty thrilling playoffs that we've got coming for us. I think that any team in this bracket can very realistically win the whole competition. I think every team has kind of pros and cons, has some positive aspects and some negative ones. Obviously, there's a bit of a hierarchy there. It's not quite all six teams are on a levy playing field. But honestly, it is actually as close as I think we can kind of get to that. Like, it's pretty wild how how tough I think it has been to predict the potential winner of this tournament. Uh, and when speaking to kind of fellow writers at HLTV, they all had kind of the same opinion that the field was looking actually pretty even all things considered. And there is a case to be made for any of these teams winning this whole competition. Basically, I'm going to go through these teams in the power ranking order. So the writers at HLTV did a power ranking top to bottom, averaged it all out between the writers, and we got a hierarchy of teams. I think it's pretty fair, and I think it's pretty on the money. So I'm going to be using that as sort of my guideline for going through the teams. And without further ado, we'll get stuck in with Na'Vi. Now, I think everybody can agree that Na'Vi are not quite in their absolute best form right now. They've started the year a little bit shakily. Blast was not all that impressive. However, they've come into Katowice and they've got the job done. They got themselves to the stadium, straight semi-final berth, didn't drop a series. It all looks pretty good on the surface. However, if you dig a little bit deeper, they got spanked. 16-4 on Nuke by Entz. It's not a great look. They got run very, very close by FaZe, as you can see. The last map went all the way to overtime. They lost overpass. This series honestly could have gone either way. It was very, very tight. And just in general, Na'Vi are looking short of the Imperious form that they ended last year with. Admittedly, it's a very, very high bar. They were basically spanking everyone last year. No one really could beat them if they were playing even close to their best. And they obviously won all the tournaments, scooped up everything at the end of last year. It looked like it was the start of an era. Now, that era discussion is obviously going to take a bit of a turn if Na'Vi continue this year in the form they've kind of started in. However, we do have to be honest with ourselves and say they still come into these playoffs as the favourites simply by the fact that they're Na'Vi, that they ended last year the way they did. That team is still in there somewhere, most likely. I doubt that we're never going to see that Na'Vi ever again. And they've also been beating teams even when they're not at their best. They're not in their best form, but they comfortably put Furia to bed 2-0. They beat Ents. In the end, overall, the series was, you know, Na'Vi were the better team. There's no doubting that. And again, against FaZe, it was very, very close. It was tight. It was a tough battle, but they still got themselves over the line. I think the ultimate reason that Na'Vi was so comfortably the S tier, every single HATV writer put them as their top of the power rankings, I think is simply the land pedigree. You can't get away from the fact Na'Vi are the most accomplished five-man lineup on land in recent times by an absolute country mile, considering we didn't have a lot of lands. They all came at the end of last year and Na'Vi won them all. And basically, now that we're going into the arena, you've got to expect Na'Vi are going to get that land buff. They're going to get the motivation. They're going to get hungry and back to something like the team that they ended last year with. Basically, I'm expecting Na'Vi to slap some heads together to really show us a better face than they did in the group stages. And... I wouldn't go so far as to say I expect Na'Vi to win, but I would be surprised if Na'Vi were not one of the two teams in the grand final. One thing I also think is a boon for Na'Vi is the fact that they are on the opposite side of the bracket as the two other best teams, I think, coming into this playoffs, Heroic and Gambit. But we'll talk more about those two teams later. In fact, Gambit, we're going to talk about right now. So Gambit obviously had to overcome an opening round loss to Nip, which is not super encouraging. I don't think Nip are in an amazing place right now. They don't have device. They're very reliant on Hampus. Res did look better at this event, so all things considered, it's not a disaster, but not great. And then coming down to the lower bracket, Gambit just started getting better with every single game they played. This Copenhagen Flames game started off close. Couple of maps traded back and forth, both teams getting into double digits. And then Vertigo, bang. This Vitality game, Mirage, spank. And then on Inferno, it was a pretty close scoreline, but by the end of that game, Gambit were the only team that looked like they were going to win it. 
Some of their mid-round calling on the T side of Inferno was absolutely sublime. Honestly, if you want to see what it's like to call a good mid-round, go and watch Gambit's T side on this Inferno. It was so, so good. And then, as if fate was making sure Gambit could put all of their demons to bed before playoffs, they then beat Nip in the rematch. 2-0, pretty comfortable, no fuss in that one. Gambit didn't really ever get into top gear. As you can see by the fact that Nip did get to double digits, but again, really, look at these ratings. There's only one team winning this series, really. Now, this is another screen that makes for very pleasant reading for Gambit. As you can see, they are the only team with two players in the top 10. Both Axile and Shiro are putting up superstar numbers this event. They are a dynamic duo. They are basically simple and electronic in this tournament at the moment. The biggest revelation for sure has been Axile's return to some absolutely sublime form. This is the Axile that we saw in the online era at the start of 2021. He's taking more risks, he's making more solo plays, and he's opening up rounds a lot more than he was doing, I think, towards the end of 2021. Don't get me wrong, Axile's stats hadn't really suffered per se, but I think he wasn't quite the same impact as at the start of 2021 during that online era. The final point I'd make about Gambit is that their map pool looks like it's starting to get back to that really, really deep level that they again had towards the start of 2021. I know I refer to it a lot, but it was Gambit's prime era. And yeah, combining all of this with their great start to the year, winning that Fun Spark event, I think Gambit are looking really in excellent shape. Their T sides are probably the thing I think is their biggest boon. In a CT-sided meta, I think it's really important to still be able to put together a potent offense, and Gambit seems to have got that nailed down to a T. I'll be honest, if everything goes, like, kind of perfectly for every single team, I think Gambit probably make the final and take on Na'Vi, but I definitely don't think it's a clear-cut thing, just because of how strong our Heroic, and we're going to talk about them next. So I was a little bit critical of the Danes towards the back end of last year because I felt like they'd stagnated a little bit as a team. Obviously, around sort of May time in 2021, they won that ESL Pro League. Everyone remembers that iconic Cadian clutch against Gambit. But since then, Heroic have struggled to recapture those heights, that heady form that saw them win that event. They've been perennial playoff contenders, don't get me wrong. They tend to place well at events, but they just don't quite look like they're ready to challenge for a title. However, coming into this event, they seem to have very quickly put aside that poor result to K23 in that pinnacle online event. Uh, and they've really just gone from strength to strength at this event. They had probably the hardest run of any of the teams that made playoffs. They had to play OG, Vitality, and Virtus Pro. And all three of those teams, if you ask most analysts at the moment, they're going to be sort of knocking it around in that top 10. And they're going to be, you know, potentially looking to go deep in events. So the fact that Heroic was able to kind of cruise through without dropping a series was really very promising, and they look really, really good while doing so. I think one of the main criticisms you could have levied against them before that Virtus Pro series was that they were looking very reliant on Starven to put superstar numbers up. If we look here, absolutely banging. And if we look here, again, absolutely banging. A long way away from the nearest uh, teammate. However, by the time Virtus Pro rolled around, look, like everyone's getting stuff done. It was a little bit weird because Virtus Pro looked significantly worse in this match than I think they did in the others. This match also didn't actually matter for getting to playoffs. This was just for seeding, so you might want to take this one with a pinch of salt. But even if you do take it with a pinch of salt, Heroic have been really, really good so far this event. Yeah, I'm feeling really big on Heroic. They've actually surprised me. I thought they were again going to look very stagnant coming into this year. I thought they were just going to be like that fifth best team in the world. A bit of a gatekeeper for the top five, but... They've blown me out of the water here, and they've blown all the other teams out of the water that they've played so far too. The two question marks I still think potentially exist around this Heroic team are one, Heroic on LAN. We haven't seen them, like I say, hit those ESL Pro League heights, and it's particularly noticeable because we went back to LAN in the latter part of 2021, and Heroic just, again, that's where they really seem to be that sort of like also ran kind of team. They were going to make playoffs, they were going to probably make top four, but... They weren't going to threaten to go any further. And I wonder if the LAN environment, they still have a young team who don't necessarily all have the most LAN experience. I think there still might be some teething issues there potentially. 
And the other question mark I have is around Cadian. I think he's a perfectly serviceable AWPer, but when you are going up against Simple, Shiro, Brokey, and Jame in the form that they're all in right now, I think Cadian could get bullied in the AWP versus AWP matchup. When it comes down to it, I think if Heroic can continue their good form as a team, if Starven can continue being a superstar, and if they can protect Cadian from those AWP v AWP matchups that might occur in the playoffs, I don't see why Heroic can't go all the way. And in the HLTV rankings, it was kind of Na'Vi were in a tier of their own. I think everybody still put Na'Vi as the number one and found it hard to look beyond them. So they're kind of S tier. But I think Heroic were right alongside Gambit in that A tier. And Gambit, I think, only just pipped Heroic by like one point once I'd averaged out everyone's rankings. So the clear A tier was Gambit and Heroic. And I would probably put them on a level pegging right about now. Slightly preferring Gambit just because of that Inferno T side against Vitality. Next up, we're obviously going to talk about Virtus Pro. So, like I say, there were kind of tiers that emerged in the HLTV Power Rankings, and VP were in the next tier below. So it was like S tier Na'Vi, A tier Gambit and Heroic, and then this is the B tier now, and Virtus Pro are the top team in that B tier. I think they've just looked very, very good throughout this tournament and throughout the start of 2022. They obviously absolutely boshed through that ESL Challenger event, didn't drop a map, looked very, very convincing. Convincing against Copenhagen Flames. They had superstar massive first halves in both of these games, and basically the game was won by halftime. And then against NIP... Yeah, they're a bit wobbly on Vertigo, and Vertigo is actually one of the problems I see for VP. That map is nowhere near as good as it was at points last year. So I've definitely got some question marks around their Vertigo, and I'll be interested to see if they end up playing it much in these playoffs. But outside of that, Vertus Pro have looked like really good in terms of strength and depth. I keep banging on about how much better their T sides look with Flit in the team, but they really, really do. The balance is so much better there. The biggest worry is probably the capitulation against Heroic, but it wasn't important for qualification, so maybe you can scratch that one off, but it definitely is kind of a black mark against them, I think, for sure. And the other concern is that they don't have, like, a, a superstar. They've got great strength in depth. I think four of their players are at a 1.08 rating or above for the tournament, which is nice and solid. Like, if everyone's putting in 1.1s or greater, then you're going to have a really good time at an event. But their highest rated player is Jame, who's at 1.17. And then after that, in all of the playoffs teams, the next like best player is Simple at 1.30. So if you level like rank everyone's best player, Jame is comfortably sitting at the bottom of the best players pile in the playoffs. And I wonder if not having somebody putting up superstar fragging that can compete and go toe to toe with like Simple or Brokey or Starven or Shiro or Axile, the way those guys have been playing this event. I don't know, maybe that could end up being a concern. Obviously, VP opened this elimination bracket playing G2. I think that basically either G2 or FaZe, I would have said VP have a very good chance against. So I think we could see them playing against Na'Vi in that semi-final. But I think calling VP or G2 is a bit of a coin toss. And we're going to talk about G2 next. G2 obviously opened this event with a bit of a wobble against Fnatic. And in general, this G2 so far, including Blast, it's obviously a very ambitious roster they put together here. Monacy, that humongously hyped young talent. They've brought in Exkitaz, who's a very, very renowned coach. They've brought in Alexi B to go for a different style of calling. And it's been good, but it's been inconsistent. From tournament to tournament, They've been inconsistent. They beat Nip 16-6 at Blast, and then in the very next game, almost lost to them and needed a humongous comeback to win 22-19. So you're like, well, how good actually are you? And then they come into this tournament, and I think there's two things that, that really stood out. One, they absolutely spank Fnatic on the first map and then fall apart. Really? Like, after that confidence builder and that confidence breaker for Fnatic, you then just fall apart on the next two maps? And the funny thing was, is they fell apart on their choice. Mirage and Inferno are also two slightly concerning maps for G2. I think they're wildly inconsistent on them, and they like to let them through the veto. They like to pick Mirage, and they like to let Inferno through. So I'm not also super convinced by G2's map pool. And then here again, the inconsistency. They'll lose the first map. They look not terrible, but they look not as good as Astralis, and then they spank them. 
and then they let them get six rounds over the next two maps. Like, I, I really don't know where to put this G2 team. The one thing that you can't argue with is this. Nico's going unbelievably ham at this event and has basically been unbelievably good since the major. This guy is a 100% like, screw everyone. I am going to be the best player in the world in 2022 and I'm not even going to leave it up to doubt. I'm going to make it so that nobody else can get near me. Like, these are insane numbers absolutely insane it cannot be understated how good nico is at the moment and honestly with nico being as good as he is and then if as you can see with this rating they're not in you know this pit but just down here at 1.15 a hunter and monacy like g2 star power alone might be enough to propel them to a final and if they get to a final like absolutely anything can happen you can't really you can't do too many predictions i think at that point just with the with the form that the teams are in and stuff so whilst I think G2 are wildly inconsistent and that's what stops me confidently predicting them to like, I don't know, make the final or definitely get through their court final against VP, I do think that their peak is up there with like Gambit. I think it's higher than Heroic's peak. I think it's up there with Gambit and Na'Vi. I think those three teams have the highest peak out of these teams. Problem is, is that G2, I think, are super inconsistent at the moment. Not just across, you know, all of the, the series that they play, but also even just map to map to map. They're very inconsistent. So, yeah, not sure about G2. Obviously, that means the final team that we are going to talk about is going to be FaZe. Now, it's hard to gauge FaZe because obviously they played a blast and they look good they look promising got out in first to third you know were, were one of the the winning teams in that blast premier group spring but then they've had to stumble through this tournament with you know a standing in the form of jks their best player rops had to sit out reigns had to play from isolation they've had to deal with all of this covid bullshit and somehow they've still managed to get through to the playoffs. And they actually ran Na'Vi very, very close in this deciding series. Admittedly, their full team was back together. But like I say, Rain was playing from isolation and Rops hasn't been with them and they've not had practice. It's just not been ideal at all for FaZe. And I think that's the only reason they sit comfortably at the bottom of these power rankings. Like I said, tiers developed and FaZe were comfortably in a sort of C tier of their own. I don't think that's any reflection on FaZe's peak level or where we expect FaZe to kind of go through the rest of the year, their trajectory. I think it's just their circumstances of this event haven't been super favorable. And so that's been a little bit rough for them. The one thing that is definitely like not in question is Brokey. Bam. Brokey, I mean, bam, still pretty good. Brokey, bam. Brokey has been absolutely balling out of control this event. He has got a higher rating than Simple, 1.31. He has got superstar numbers. He is up there with the Shiros, the Axars, and the Simples. And if Brokey can develop into a superstar Orpa, and you've also got Rops in the team, and then you've got Twists bringing up as like that third kind of like connecting piece, kind of like phase are insanely high skill ceiling like it's mad it's mad and then you've got rain as well Ra rain rain is supposed to be like the fourth guy he's the guy where it's like yeah you don't have to frag rain but if you feel like it go for it rain rain is nuts on their day phase can probably go toe to toe with anyone in terms of raw fragging the late round trio of rops twists and brokey is utterly terrifying rain's an insane entry and an ex just an insane luxury player to have as your fourth and then Carrigan is one of the most storied, experienced, and land buffy IGLs of all time. Carrigan is so, so good on LAN. Even though FaZe are sat here at the bottom of the power rankings, and they are probably my least favoured team, I would, I would, I think I put them last. Did I? Let me check. No, I actually put G2 last because they're so inconsistent. But, you know, FaZe, I don't expect to get to the final. I think they're probably at some point going to hit a wall in a tough series, whether it's their core final versus Gambit. I don't expect them to make it through that one or whether they do and they end up getting to the semi-final. I think before they get to the final, they're going to hit a wall where the lack of practice, the lack of playing together as much as the other squads is going to hurt them. But I do think FaZe will go on to do some great stuff this year. I think they'll win a tournament. I think they're so high skill ceiling. Brokey's developing. It's very exciting and an exciting time to be a phase fan for sure i hope you have enjoyed that video boys girls and otherwise you know the drill hit the like button hit the subscribe button 
Go and share my videos with all your mates, especially your grandmother. Uh, and you know the drill, you know how I like to finish these videos. I like to say that if you didn't like it, and then I make a joke. So if you didn't like it, knock knock. <laughs>